What's good everybody, it's your boy BB Malloy. Tonight is something a little bit different. I'm taking a step back from the reaction videos to share something special with you. As you may have seen from my Instagram story, my Facebook story, my band The Dead Zephyrs have come back together after two years of being separate. I'm really, really looking forward to this show. It's being hosted by my parents here in Marston at the bowling alley. If you are watching this in Marston or the Wired Up or even Wellington and you want tickets, the event finder link for those tickets is in the bio. Tickets are 10 bucks, but somewhere in this video is a promo code that you will have to spot in order to get 25% off your ticket. So keep an eye out for that. Today we are looking at the top 10 shows, in my opinion, the Dead Zephyrs ever played. I had a lot of fun with this band. We were together for a long time and we played some pretty wicked places and met some crazy f***ing people. So let's have a look. Coming in at number 10, we've got opening for Harvey Knows a Killer. If you've heard of Harvey Knows a Killer, that's awesome. If you haven't, they're a psychedelic rock band from Auckland. Uh, Rhythmic Slither, go check that song out, it's massive. So the reason why this show is one of my favorites is that it happened around the time of Crispy's birthday. This is back when it was me, Crispy, and Alex. Crispy and Jared, his friend, decided to go and get on the piss, being that it's Crispy's birthday, time to celebrate, you know? Which was really cool. If he hadn't have done it like 20 minutes before showtime, and we couldn't find him, so we had to go and get him. We've been given this opening slot, you know, they went and did like a band poster and stuff. So I went and got Crispy, he came back. He was half cut, so he was just walking around the stage. At one point he was lying on his back on the ground. Got up, walked off the stage and pulled his lead out of his amp. The bass just completely stopped. It was fantastic. The last song of the night, if I remember correctly, was Daddy Drinks Because You Cry. A very fast punk song with a massive loud ending. Lots of screaming, lots of whatever and the whole place went dead silent straight afterwards. So we were like, oh no, we've messed this up. You know, obviously we sucked. And the bass player for Harvey Knows a Killer stood up from the sound desk and just shouted, yes. Coming in at number nine is our show at Bad Granny's. We played with Ghost Who Walks and Free The Cats. Uh, Ghost Who Walks is led by Sam Fowles, who's a really, really good friend of the band. Great guy, go check out his music. He is a phenomenal musician. Meanwhile, me and Chris had an argument at Soundcheck, which was a little bit over the top, I'm not gonna lie, on my part, because I was sort of acting like a bit of an So we went and had a beer together and sorted it out, but it made for a really, really good gig. We made some great friends over in Wellington. We made some even better fans. Bad Grannies wanted to have us back, but unfortunately, as things do on Cuba Street, they close down, they rebrand, they get new owners and things like that. That was easily one of my favorite Wellington shows. Coming in at number eight is our slot on Wired Up a Television. Thanks to Toby Mills for this, because it was amazing. So the backstory behind it is, I was working for a roading company here in New Zealand. We had traveled away. There was a certain day that you had to ring or email in to get your specific slot to play as part of the show. On my way back from the work site, I was driving and something hit my windscreen. I ended up swerving off the road. The rear view mirror flew off and smacked me in the head. It was all sorts of weird. Pulled over, I'd rung up my boss and said I might have hit a duck or something. Turns out I'd actually hit someone's pet peacock. It's a long story where it went from there, but the short story is I got back to the hotel. I booked our five o'clock slot. We played the Copthorn, we absolutely smashed it, and you can go and listen to that live album on Spotify right now. Number seven for me is our slot when we opened for Richie Ramone. Now, Richie Ramone himself was an absolutely drunken buffoon. I never want to play another show with that man. He was out of his mind. He almost pulled his c out on stage. There's a fine line between punk and when you get too old to even try to do that sh Big shout out to No Refunds. Those boys were amazing. Big shout out to Ronnie Simmons as well, Richie's guitarist, who was actually a really genuine guy and we developed quite a cool friendship. I still keep in contact with Ronnie now and again. We smashed that show. I walked up to Richie afterwards to shake his hand. I told him that I was part of one of the opening bands. He goes, yeah, yeah, I I saw you, man. You guys were great. He turned up five minutes late to his own set. There is no way in hell he saw me, but you know, rock stars, right? Number six is the Battle of the Band semi-final for Demon Energy. We took a whole busload of our mates over to the Royal in Palmerston North. Absolutely killed that show. It was monstrous. That was one of my favorite shows we ever played. Here's a clip of what the judge had to say after we finished playing. So, without any further ado, one man in particular came out higher than everybody else on both the judges and the audience votes tonight, so uh, that was a no-brainer, and that band that is definitely going through is band number five, The Dead Zephyr. 
Then straight after that, we managed to get all the way to the national final, which leads me to number five, which is our Battle of the Bands national final. The reason why the show is so good is not because of how the show went. You had to draw your place out of a hat, like where you wanted to start. Unfortunately, I drew and we went first on the first night of the finals. So no one was there except the judges and like my family. It, it was a loss from the get go. What made this show brilliant is the trip that it took to get there. So we all jumped in a Ford Transit. We got halfway there, we were in Tokoroa. The clutch cable snapped and we were stuck in Tokoroa at like 8.30 at night. We managed to find a mechanics out in the middle of nowhere. He tried his hardest to fix the clutch cable. It didn't work and then they put us up for the night in their house. We were, we were so appreciative. We rocked up to the house and this dude had no sh like 13 cats. The place reeked of cat piss. There were stains all over the carpet. He rolled out this mattress for Jordan and Sarah. They slept in the lounge and me and Crispy slept on this two-seater couch like top and tailing. Woke up the next morning, dry mouth, cat fur everywhere, reeking of cat piss, ready to play a show in Auckland that night. If I could ever go back to one memory and just relive it, even for a day, it was that. It was so stressful, it was bonding, it was it was all the good stuff, man. It was all the good stuff. Coming in at number four is our trip to Levin to the Alternative Entertainment Bureau. These dudes were some colorful characters, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't a good gig, I don't remember much of it. it. Had a pretty pounding headache at the time. We had never heard of this place before. We got told there was a thriving punk scene in Levin, so we were like, sweet, we got no reef fun's going, we'll go as well, we'll have a good time, mishaps playing, we've heard of them, and we turned up and the place is a shed that had been carpeted with like carpet samples, the stage was made out of like piled up crates, the bar was like an old bathroom that had been converted into a bar, it was like a mechanics workshop, it was hilarious, they had lights, they had a PA, it was good to go, but it was the most dingy hole you've ever been into, like it made dive bars look like the f Ritz. So coming in at number three for me is That's Us Fridays. My good friend Shay used to put on a show once a month on a Friday night, normally at the Horse and Hound, which is now J-Bar, and the Dead Zephyrs got invited along to play an opening set. Our set kicked off at like 6.30 at night. I'm sure Shay had heard us before. I'm not sure if the bar knew what they were in for. There's still old couples sitting there eating their two for $20 steak meals watching the rugby on the TV and having a great time. And then we started our set with Daddy Drinks Because You Cry, which is just loud and punk and in your face straight away. People got up halfway through their meal, like picked up their plate halfway through their meal, took it to the bar, said thanks very much and left. That first song is only two minutes long. For the last minute of that song, we played to no one except a bartender sitting there shaking his head in disapproval. Played like three more songs, then Shay played to no one, and whoever the third band was, they played to no one as well. I'm really sorry. Coming in at number two is the New Year's Eve gig we did at the Wakataki Hotel out towards Castle Point. I, I don't know what to say. There was camping, there was beverages and other substances. There was just good times all around. There was tons of people. Everyone sang along. We had just the most debaucherously fantastic night. We saw it in the new year. We sang Old Lang Syne. We drank way too much and we just had the best time. I, I don't think I've ever come across a gig that sticks in my mind as much as that New Year's Eve gig, apart from number one. So obviously, we've reached the climax. Coming in at number one for me, my favorite Dead Zephyrs gig of all time is Halloween at Tripoli. Now the reason why Halloween at Tripoli was so good is not only did we manage to pack about 50 people into this tiny, tiny venue. We played with our backs against the wall, we had people bumping the microphones into our mouths and it was just horrid looking back on it. They like lined the other wall with chairs and people were like getting to the bar and everyone was clashing and stuff. It was just absolute, it was a madhouse. It was crazy. The best part, we were all dressed up for Halloween. If I'm honest, the security guard could have handled it better, but the guy from noise control turned up, talked to the security guard who promptly told him to f off. So the security guard left after leaving the paper in front of him on the ground. The dude came back, told him to f off again. And then the dude went and got the cops. So at this stage, it's about half past 11. We are contracted to play until 12.30. Cops walked in and they're like, shut it down, shut it down. So we decided we were going to play Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine as loud as humanly possible while the entire crowd chants, 
the police. Needless to say, it didn't go well. The cops started like ripping cords out of amps and all that kind of stuff. So naturally, because Jordan has the only acoustic instrument, he blasted double kicks while the crowd still chanted the police. It got really out of hand. Our stuff got confiscated. I threatened the security guard to which the cop grabbed me and then Jordan grabbed the cop. It was just, it was all hectic as f Everyone ended up fine. No one got arrested. It's a big one. No one got arrested. Our stuff got brought out of the impound pretty quickly and we definitely hired new security the next time around because that was just ridiculous. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 Zed Zephyr's gigs of all time. I know it's something a little bit different from what the channel is used to, but I'm back on board this Saturday with a new video. Next Sunday is another episode of the BB Malloy Show, so go over to that channel and subscribe as well. If I can get that channel to 100 subscribers by the end of the year, I'll release season three. But at this stage, it's not really something that I'm gonna keep going with if it's not gonna get the attention that it deserves. Hopefully you saw the promo code word somewhere in the video. If you see it, the first 10 people to go and use that are gonna get discounted tickets. The gig is on the 30th of October at Master Bowl. Tickets cost $10 from Event Finder. I know you're gonna enjoy it if you come. One night only, the Dead Zephyrs back together again. I will see you before then, but I will have to catch you on the next one.